This is an example demonstrating how to establish fixed recycle rates in reaction separation systems. We're going to base this on the MIPA synthesis example we worked on earlier this semester. The flow sheet you see here is basically what we developed in class. I've made a couple of changes I'll talk you through. Uh, these are for clarity and for uh, speed of convergence. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that we have an ammonia to IPA feed ratio of 3 to 1. You can see that up here. Um, I, instead of putting all the feeds into a flash tank and letting that do the thermodynamic calculations, I've put in several mixing points and an explicit heat exchanger. Hopefully that will clarify what's happening with the recycle structure in this uh, flow sheet. Um, the other major change I made, because we have some issues with the thermodynamics for the DIPA IPA water system, um, instead of using a shortcut column to split the water from the recycled DIPA, I've used a different unit operation in ChemCAD, which is called a component separator. Uh, the component separator you can find on the separations tab. You can see this is the icon. What the component separator allows you to do is establish thermodynamic properties, thermodynamic conditions for two product streams called a top stream and a bottom stream. Um, in this case I have it set so that these streams leave at their bubble point so they're leaving a saturated liquid at the pressure we had been talking about for the column. Um, what the component separator does is allows you to set a split for each component in the system. Uh, what fraction of each component goes to either the top or the bottom stream. In this case I've indicated that everything except the water is supposed to go to the bottom stream, the water goes to the top stream, and we'll just recycle that entire bottom stream. This isn't a rigorous uh, simulation of the process, but it will be close for a, a relatively sharp separation. So with those changes, what we want to do now is first to establish the ammonia recycle uh, leaving the ammonia column recycling back to this point near the ammonia feed. Um, this, remember we have 3 to 1 ammonia to IPA starting here. Uh, we're ultimately going to need to feed only about a, uh, 1 to 1 ammonia to IPA uh, and re we're going to recycle the other 200. The 100 is pretty close to the stoichiometric amount. So what we're going to do uh, first, what I'm going to do here is reroute this product stream uh, away from the product, uh, loop it back to that mixing point, and then I'm going to add a compressor to that stream uh, to bring it from the, the column pressure back to the operating pressure. So I'll use the insert unit functionality, drop a compressor in here, So, uh, it'll take just a second to tidy it up because of the default uh, way that these fall in. Let me reroute this stream to clean it up a little bit. Like so. And what you can see is we now have a compressor in this recycle loop. The problem with this as it's set up now is we don't have a way to fix the actual rate in that recycle. Um, so ChemCAD can come up with a number for that, but it's not necessarily going to be 200. Uh, what you'll find if you do web searching is some people say, well, you, if you do this manually, you can get it to stay stable at that number. But there is a better solution uh, than that. Uh, and that brings us to the idea of using a stream reference unit operation. If you look at the all unit ops, you can see it here or um, on the miscellaneous tab uh, in your palette, you can see this SREF. So what I'm going to do is add a stream reference operation to this recycle stream, which is currently 14. Uh, again, using the insert unit functionality. Just a moment for me to make this look a little bit nicer so it's a little bit easier to read. Really root this stream here. Okay, now let's talk about what this operation actually does. The, and to that, let me open up the uh, unit operation properties dialog here. 
The stream reference has several modes. The one we're most interested in now is called reference from stream to stream. So I'm going to select that. And the option I'm going to take is to transfer all the stream properties from stream 14, which is what's leaving the compressor, to stream 15, which is recycled back to the mix to be mixed with the incoming ammonia. So let me transfer those properties from stream 14 to stream 15. So what that's going to do is move our composition, our temperature, our pressure, our enthalpies, all those key properties. What it doesn't do necessarily is move the flow rate, but you can see there's another dialog down here that allows you to fix the flow rate. So I'm going to establish that as 200 kilomoles per hour we're done with that. You'll see I've got a little bit of a warning because I've got a controller that's changing something other than a feed. That's not, that won't stop you from running. That's just ChemCAD's way of telling you to make sure that you want to do what you just indicated. Uh, the other thing I need to do uh, before I try running this is to uh, provide specifications for the compressor. Uh, we want to operate this in the mode of specifying an outlet pressure. We'll make that the same pressure as the incoming ammonia. We'll give it a 63% efficiency. That's 90% for the compressor, um, excuse me, 70% uh, for the compressor, 90% for the drive. Okay, with all that put together, let me also drop this uh, inlet ammonia stream down from 300 kilomoles per hour to 100, and then we can run the whole simulation. You'll see I get a couple of warnings. One of these warnings is again for the stream controller. The other one is because down here for the IPA feed, I only have one stream coming into a mixer. So we don't have any problems that we need to fix here. So let's run the simulation. It converges pretty quickly. Now if you look at the flow of stream 15, you'll see that the, the stream reference has done what it needs to do. It's at that rate at 200 kilomoles per hour. If you look at the feed to the reactor, let's just look at the unit operation streams, what you'll see is that I'm basically at 3 to 1 ammonia to isopropanol coming in. So, so far so good. The, we have a small problem here because stream 15, the recycle stream, we've forced to be 200. But the other specifications in the process say that we have, leaving the top of the column, 211 kilomoles per hour. So we, we do actually have a problem with the material balance that we need to resolve. The way we're going to fix that is with a controller unit operation. So what I'm going to do is add a controller to stream 5, the overhead from the ammonia column, uh, to change the incoming ammonia rate until I get that same 200 kilomoles per hour leaving overhead from the column. So let me again uh, do the, my insert unit. And you can see here in the miscellaneous tab, I've got controllers. These, these two control options function the same way. So let me just drop this one in. Take a moment to tidy up the presentation here. And What you can see here is I've. Now let me fix this stream also. Okay, so I've got stream five, uh, my ammonia overhead coming to this controller, going to stream 16, which feeds the compressor. So let's open up the properties for the controller. Um, it defaults to the controller being off. We actually want this controller to operate in a feed backward mode. We're going to be going upstream of the controller to make a change rather than passing a, a process change downstream. So what we want to do is adjust for stream one, we want to adjust the total mole rate uh, in molar units until the flow rate of stream 5, and that needs to be the uh, total mole rate, uh, is equal to a target, so we're going to establish that target as 200 uh, 
put it in more units. So we should be good to go here, say OK, run the simulation, uh, got three warnings. Uh, one of the warnings has to do with there being no initial estimate for the compressor feed. That's not a problem. The controller will handle that. Um, calculation works fine. If you look here now, you can see the flow rate here is 199.996, which is close enough to 200. That's about as closely it's going to, as it's going to converge. So what I have now is an ammonia recycle rate that uh, an ammonia recycle rate that's at my specified value. If I wanted to change this to, for example, to 250, I can just go into the stream uh, reference tab change that to 250, go into the controller, change its specification to 250, rerun the simulation. It'll take a moment, it will converge, and you'll see that now I'm at 250, 250. So this all works. So now I have actually the flexibility to change that ratio over any range that I wish. And you can see that what it's done to the ammonia feed is dialed it back from 100 back to 90. Uh, that accounts for uh, unreacted material because we're making DIPA. So let me save this as uh, version B of the spreadsheet, or flow sheet rather, before we do anything else to it.